Hello and welcome to this new video. Today we are going to carefully look at something presented purely for educational purposes, so I will thoroughly show you utilizing the versatile Raspberry Pi single board computer that we previously saw in our earlier videos and this incredibly handy antenna here with its integrated USB board, which is obviously designed for robust Wi-Fi connectivity, exactly how to effectively capture WPA passwords from the neighbor next door. Of course, this video is for educational purposes and some parts will obviously be censored. So you absolutely must perform this test only with your own equipment, if you wish. Let's proceed to turn on our Raspberry Pi device and then navigate to this particular section. Just a brief moment, please, because I have only just recently powered it on. So it is absolutely essential that we meticulously ensure beyond any doubt that it is indeed fully powered on and operational. If I'm not mistaken, the IP address is this one, there once it's up and running. It's super fast. We absolutely need to connect with our remote desktop. It's true that it responds to ping requests, but it hasn't completely finished booting up yet. So let's patiently wait for just a moment. Okay, let's check now. Perfect, here we go, our Kali Linux system. Now, I'm showing you this entire operation using a graphical remote desktop interface, but you can quite easily accomplish it via SSH as well. So there's absolutely no problem at all. I'm just showing it with the desktop because, well, it's visually cooler, if you'll graciously allow me the expression. As you can clearly see, I'm currently connected to my personal Wi-Fi network using my trusty little Wi-Fi card. Then we open the console, or rather the shell. Once it's fully open and completely loaded, now this particular process is indeed a bit slow because absolutely everything displayed on the screen is rendered in full high definition with all the intricate graphics and visual elements so consequently it might appear to be a little sluggish or somewhat unresponsive during its initial operation. And we then proceed to type the command Wi-Fi D. Here we need to specify which card we'll use. In my case, I'll use card number two, which is the USB one. I press enter and here we have all the Wi-Fi networks around me. Let's enlarge the window a bit. Then to completely stop the running program, you just need to press the keyboard combination of CTRLC and it will immediately cease its operation. Following this, you'll have to make a crucial decision to carefully choose whether you want to thoroughly test all of the available options or simply focus on a specific particular one. In this particular instance, I will personally select and proceed with a specific one from the choices presented. This first attack starts, which will last 4 minutes and 54 seconds. For obvious reasons, I'll pause the video and be right back. Here we are. We are now counting down the final moments, with 6 seconds remaining, then 5 seconds, followed by 4, 3, 2, and just 1 second left. At this precise moment, the undershade capture process officially commences, and with great success, the password has been definitively located and found. And voila. In this case, it was very quick because I had already done it before, but where did the monitor go? But anyway, if instead you wanted to try them all, let's say, for example, if you want to try all of them, using a Raspberry Pi is also incredibly easy and convenient because you do not have to, for instance, leave your personal computer connected for many, many hours waiting. So it is much more convenient and practical for your needs. When it's done scanning, I'll show you. You can simply leave it there, completely plugged in and diligently doing its important job. Because if you were to have it try all of the available options, it would obviously take a considerable amount of time. Therefore, I cannot possibly stay here with you, keeping you waiting here for absolutely nothing. So, I will now press the curl key, see as before. Except this time I type all, it starts, and we'll try the first attack and then the second, which is for de-authenticating the clients. Here on the right, you can see there's one client connected, one client connected, one client connected. When there's a client connected, it's easier because you disconnect the client, the client reconnects, and it immediately captures the handshake. 
This here are all WPA, so not WPA2, and that's a very significant risk. But I have to be completely honest with you. In my personal opinion, the program actually makes a little mistake here because, for example, I personally use WPA3, and here, as you can clearly see, Valerio Home, in this particular connection here, it doesn't just show me WPA. So anyway, that's precisely how you can do it. Plus, I really want to tell you something important. A lot of people watch my videos but aren't yet subscribed. Subscribing to the channel doesn't cost you anything at all, and it genuinely helps me grow a lot. So if you truly like the video, please leave a like and a thoughtful comment just for the YouTube algorithm. Again, it doesn't cost you anything at all, but it really helps me a great deal to grow. Oh, I almost forgot to mention if you want to see even more videos on how to effectively use, in this specific case, the Raspberry Pi for Wi-Fi networks. Because once you've successfully got the password, Obviously, the simplest and most straightforward thing is that you have free internet access. You can easily connect, and that's essentially it. But you can do so many other incredibly useful things, from comprehensive scans to accurately detecting hidden cameras, automatically opening doors, managing IoT devices, and so on and so forth. If you're interested, leave a comment, and I'll show you more really interesting videos. See you next time, and bye.